Somos Viña. We are Vineyard. I mean, there's just a lot of darkness, and whether it was rooted fully in a spirit of death, it didn't matter in that moment I needed to be delivered. Again, we couldn't have started there in Kansas City. I wouldn't have had context. I would have been too much. I think in this empowerment journey, you're just committed to whatever layer or next encounter of healing, because we're not on the other side of heaven where we're just perfect, but we're committed to a life going, Lord, I want to minister in this way to others, but I can't minister this way to others if I'm not willing to do it myself. I can't go around praying for healing for people, and then anytime I'm sick, be like, well, the Lord's never going to heal me. I have to actually say, I need healing too. Welcome to the We Are Vineyard podcast, conversations to help us grow with Jesus and each other. This week, we're launching a mini series around a very special session from our national conferences this summer, a story of the Vineyard in Song, where we explored the themes that have marked the moves of the Spirit in the Vineyard since it began in 1974 and some of the associated songs. In this episode, Adam and I interview Annabeth Morgan. Annabeth is a worship leader, songwriter, and a staff pastor at the Mile High Vineyard Neighborhood Churches in Denver, Colorado. Let's listen in. All right, what's up, everybody? This is the We Are Vineyard podcast. And Nicole, what are we calling this? Well, this is also the Ferment Podcast. Yes, we're it in is. Both places. We're sharing. I totally we forgot totally that detail. We are totally sharing. Collaboration. Right. Yeah. yeah. We're doing a history of the vineyard in song, but we're doing some follow-up with some of the people who helped make it, some of the people who sang, some of the people who are in videos, and here we are. For some reason, my brain couldn't get to the word follow-up. I know that we're doing a history of the vineyard <laughs> podcast, but I couldn't get to the word follow up. I was like, there's a key word in there for this little series. And I couldn't find it. Thank you. That's why we're a team. We got this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> clearly jet lagged as well or something. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so here's what's up. Annabeth is here. And one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you was because, A, you featured prominently in the history of the vineyard moment that evening because a, you were up on stage with me and you had the cool video where you told your story. Uh, why don't we just start here? Will you just will you just sort of like recap a little bit of that story? Because kind of what that story was about was this idea of home, right? Yeah. 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 Just kind of recap it a little bit. Sure. Sure. So grew up in a different arm of the church. And then right when my husband and I first got married, I told him, you know, I'm really tired of reading the scriptures and Jesus does all this cool stuff. And then I go to church and I don't really experience any of the cool stuff. Like, can someone be healed? And I mean, he spent a lot of times casting demons out of people. And I'm not sure at that moment I really wanted to see that. <laughs> but I did want to think that there could be freedom that way, that powerful sort of freedom. And so I told Kyle, like, I want to give church, the church version that I know a break. And so he thought he had married a girl who was giving up her faith, but I wasn't. And then I had a coworker that had no idea what the vineyard was. She just knew that was her church. It was a non-denominational church in Kansas City, Missouri. And so I said I would go to church with her because she could tell I love Jesus and walked in. And it just was, a well, first it was a feeling like I felt a presence. And then there was a sound. It was the worship. And I, at this point, did not do worship. So even the sound had a thing where I just felt welcomed. And you know, when you, you're you looking for something that's missing, but you don't know what you're looking for because you haven't ever found it. Right. So all I know is that the sense of home was like, this is kind of what I've been hoping I would experience, something that's more than just knowledge of the Bible, which I love. The Bible is so powerful and so, you know, we all should love the Bible. But the way I'm wired, I wanted to experience things and I never really had before, except on my own. And that anytime I would tell somebody that, like my mom, she would get, she would get nervous. Like, you think you heard a voice? Maybe you have issues, not like <laughs> the voice of God, you know? Mm -hmm. So all that was very secretive in me. And so this home thing was, I mean, we know it now as the presence of God, but it was the sound of worship. It was the just the feeling in that space. And then I the, the fruit of it was I just started crying. Once we were in the sanctuary, I was crying and I cried through the whole thing. And I Did remember, you know why you were crying? I just knew it felt like finally, but I, again, I wasn't like finally because it was just finally the church experience. Cause again, I was ready to lay it. I mean, not, maybe not lay it down fully, but I had told Kyle, I do not want to find the, the tradition of church that I was raised in and just go to one that was close to us because I was kind of over it. I was like, man. And then the other thing that I didn't say in the, in, at the History of the Vineyard thing was there was also a woman on the stage. 
And there were not many women on stages where where I was raised as far as the the church I went to. So I think subconsciously, all of that was just like, (gasps) oh, and I wanted to return. And I think that was the thing that made me the most emotional was like, I want to come back here next week. And again, I was ready to just be, I'll just read the Bible and find a small group. I was ready to be a house church person, if I'm honest. But you weren't a worship person. No, no. Were you a singer? Uh, I like sang <laughs> no, no, Nothing. no, no. In the, the shower. Yeah, no, in the I'm shower. Saying, no, I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, did you, I mean, I, I understand the South. Did you sing special music at your church? No, no one knew I sang. No one knew? No. Ah, so like lots of things kind of got awakened. Yes. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is so funny because, I mean, again, you guys are like, you don't know me other than, I mean, you know me, but you don't know me without singing, right? Right. Or leading worship. But that wasn't there yet either. And so it was an awakening in a lot of ways. But again, I think, so, you know, if, if you go all the way back, my home life was very tumultuous as a child. And so there's probably something in me that always longed for a sense of safety and, and security and welcome and warmth that I, I, I wouldn't say I was without it all the time. My mom is so kind and so beautiful and I would honor her so much, but there was a lot of chaos and a lot of abuse, lots of stuff. Mm-hmm. So even that, I think God was was going, you can settle in here. Yeah, he was putting his finger it's on that. It's safe here, yeah, you yeah. know? Something else was going. That's right. It's going to be a, he- a deeper healing work. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, were in, you were in the room, the kind of room. Where I could, yes, a wholeness could yeah, come. And again, yeah. I'm not like, I'm not Jesus. I'm not whole right now, but but that has been kind of my journey of home. Is this is a place where you can air things that are in the secret places and and have healing, but also air things that are in the dreamy places and have them become a reality. You know, so amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, Anna Beth, like giving an analogy. When you go, you buy your first house, right? You walk into a bunch of places, and if you're married, maybe one person is like, "I think this can be my home," and the other person's like this is crap. Like, I don't want to live there at all. Or I don't like this neighborhood or whatever. Or yeah, that's, right. that's good, but I like this other one better, you know? So could you speak at all? I mean, I know your husband, Kyle, very well. Mm-hmm. love him. Did mm-hmm. that happen immediately for him too? Or what did the navigation of that look like for you guys as, as a newly married couple? Very newly. So we had only been married like maybe 20 days, truly. Mm. So this was very new. And we were very, very young when we got married. I wasn't even 21 yet, very young. So um, so he's young too. But his iteration of this was, he liked the church, but Kyle's kind of laid back that way. He'll be like, yeah, I liked it. And I, if you want to go back, let's go back. But what was interesting was within about, it was either that week, so within like three days or it was the following week, He had this encounter where on the video I shared this where he was praying for me and was like, I see you all wrapped up in these ropes, this bird that's all wrapped up and this hand just came and kind of cut the cord and you're able to be free and fly. And that kind of started me on a course of this Holy Spirit stuff. I know it is Holy Spirit stuff now, but this encounter of God's presence and this activity and this empowered life that we see Jesus living. And then he says, disciples do the things I did could actually happen now. And at this point it was, you know, 2003, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, but, but Kyle and I both align very quickly that way in this journey of the Holy Spirit's real. Because I think it would have been way harder. It was God's mercy and gift and grace to us. It would have been way harder if I'm trying to take off and go, look at this. And he's back here going, this doesn't exist for me. Mm-hmm. And especially even in the female stuff, like, look at the women up there leading. And he's like, I didn't think women were supposed to do that. You know, if we yeah. would have had complementarian versus egalitarian beliefs, things like that. So yeah. it's a gift. Yeah. Was So Kyle gets this like picture. Mm-hmm like prophetic thing very would you have called it prophetic then no i wouldn't have language for that was that something new for kyle yes okay so you go to church and then all of a sudden the the yes of the spirit is beginning to move through him yes but he even wouldn't have said like the lord gave me a picture it just was he says the weirdest thing i was praying he was already a prayerful person like in his life with the lord but he he was like i just couldn't get this vision out of my head so then and then he even said he's like so i went to class and did the because he was in med school so he was very deep in class you know it's Mm -hmm. intense in med school and then came out of class and was like i had the same picture again and he was like and then i'm you know he's a uh, pragmatic person so he's like i saw a bird flying in the sky and i was like 
I mean, you know, maybe it's just that's in the back of my imagination. And then he was like, but then every time I would pray for you, the same thing would happen. So I just thought I was supposed to share it with you. It's literally that non-emotional. You know, mm-hmm. now I'm like, if somebody gives me a prophetic word because I know the power of it and if it's speaking to me, I, I get tearful and I'm like, pray for me right now. Kyle and I in our apartment, I was like, okay. And then I remember crying going, I think it's because I'm supposed to get my doctorate in physical therapy and I don't. I don't want to do that, but that's a big deal. You don't just not do something. And Kyle was like, well, what if you just prayed about it? I mean, he just led me to the thing he knew. What if, what if you just prayed about that? You know, and now I would tell somebody in the vineyard, like, you should weigh that word, right? Or you should spend time with the Lord. But again, we knew none of this. We were just feeling around in the dark and the Zombie. Lord was just doing mm-hmm. stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it was very sweet. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Okay, very so... Sweet. Part of what I'm hearing you say is you go in, there's women on the stage, there's a presence of God. Maybe you wouldn't even say it that way at the Mm -hmm. time, but now you know. Mm -hmm. Presence of Jesus is here. Jesus is not just the idea in the room, but he's actually in the room. Mm -hmm. And we, there's a group of people who experience that or whatever. And then Kyle is having these ministry things awaken in him. I mean, part of what I hear in this story is lots of Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So would you connect Holy Spirit and home? For sure. I mean, I think that would be the thing for me if I said I felt like something was missing and it, things just kind of felt, I don't know how else to say it. It just felt like something was missing. And for me to feel a sense of settling, because again, you walk into home, what's the first thing you do? You kick your shoes off. You may even take some layers of clothes off. I don't know. It's each their own. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but you you settle in, right? And Because you're at home and you go, oh, I'm free to just be me here. The thing that I felt like I needed to be free to be me and I didn't know it was this Holy Spirit stuff. It's just pivotal to gifts God gave me, ways I'm wired as an emotional feeler. You know, I mean, can I, I'll tell a story from a long time ago. When I was at the church I grew up in, I walked in one Sunday, and I, I probably was 10, maybe a little younger, maybe. And immediately I was hit with an emotion. And I saw a woman across the room, and I started to get tearful. My mom's like, honey, are you okay? You don't have to go to Sunday school today. Like, I was scared to go to Sunday school. I'm like, no, mommy, I think that lady is really sad. And then she stopped for a minute and then she said, I said, because I think, I think she got divorced. (laughs) And my mom's like, don't say things like that. But you could also see her like, that's really weird that you would think that or have that moment, you know? And what was funny was she was going through a divorce Mm. and she Mm. was really sad. And she found, my mom found that in the Sunday school class. But instead of interpreting that, like my daughter hears from the Lord, my mom interpreted it as. My my daughter has some issues, so she or took that's me. Weird. That's so weird that yeah. she took me to a psych eval hmm. to see if like I had voices and mental health issues. Which is funny because if I've told her this before, because we had to do some healing around it as I was an adult, and she was like, "I just didn't know what to do with it," mm-hmm. and I still don't quite know what to do with it. But I can tell you've always been that way, and I see the way that God's using you in your career and, and life in your community in Denver, you're, you're meant to do that. I just don't have, she still just doesn't, she doesn't, she's never had that moment with the Lord hmm. and that isn't a, some, a grid she has. So even in that, the home thing now, it just feels like an affirmation of a way God designed me and not because I'm special to it. I just think you know, from glory to glory, from freedom to freedom, you just get in these moments and you're like, I just figured out another layer of intentional design from the Lord. And it really does draw me into settling into more of who I am. And I feel at home. I can kick my shoes off and go, I've got this gift. Like right now in this podcast, I said, Adam, God's giving me this. You wouldn't be like, you know, and you just think, oh, Annabeth does this. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, like many people in the vineyard do. Many, Mm -hmm. many. You know? Oh, that also makes me wonder this too. So, Kyle's word, like bird, Mm -hmm. strings are off, Mm -hmm. ropes are off. It's free. I I, I think about two things there. Mm. One is I can't help but think of just the bird as an image of the spirit itself, Mm. like this dove that comes on Jesus. Mm. So it's like a little bit of a hint maybe at, oh, the Lord wants to do this spirit work in you. But then it's also like an image of freedom. Yeah. Like it's, it's really an image of freedom. What would you want to say about that? Gosh. Like 
like in what way were was God doing a freedom work in you? Oh, I think it was just the beginning of all the moments I've had where I know I had a lot again because of my childhood. I had a lot of areas that were just stuffed deep down, things I couldn't go to, places that I I didn't feel because of my own lack of of wanting to know the truth and courage. But this just feels like, first off, I love, I've never had somebody connect the two before, so this is new for me in this moment around the spirit in the form of a dove. That just feels powerful. And also, again, it's another moment where the Lord's like, see, this really was me. I mean, not that mm. I need that. I'm not even doubting it, but he just does that. He just, do you always, I mean, yeah. you have this in your journey where you're like, I didn't need to know I was called again, but you just wanted to tell me again that keep doing that thing. But the the other part is like, I really, and it wasn't like, so within weeks, I started a deep inner healing journey with my abuse. Within weeks? You know, no, I'm saying it wasn't like that, oh, right? It was because yeah. the Lord is, I think he's a gentleman and, and tender. I had, I still needed to go to church the next couple of Sundays and bawl my eyes out through worship. And then I needed to to go, gosh, I really love worshiping and have my journey with how I started worship because the girl that brought me told on me and was like, she sings really good. And the pastor grabbed me, right? And then I needed, I, mean, I had to have lots of healing to get to the deeper work that God was like, you're really bound up in real oppression. So you need some deliverance. I mean, I can tell you my deliverance story <laughs> at a worship leaders retreat. Uh, I was in Columbus, Ohio. My husband's medical studies took us there, and I ended up at the vineyard there yeah. on staff. But I wasn't in worship. I served in worship, but I was in um, I was in VLI. I was an admin for VLI, which was not really in alignment with my gifts, but it was such a <laughs> gift because my the leader then was Steve Robbins, and he taught me a bunch about the Spirit. And he knew that I was great at worship leading. He said so. He spent money to send me to this emerging worship leaders boot camp in Estes Park, Colorado. And I went, and there was a night where a, a really dear, lovely woman who's still such a, a gift to the vineyard, Diane Thiel Sharp, spoke and gave her story. And her story is so intense and so beautiful. Yeah. And she said, from her, from her story, she said, can I just say one thing to the room? Comparison leads to death. And it just felt, you know, those moments where you're like, Ooh, you know, it felt like that. I, I think I haven't made that noise actually, which is super <laughs> embarrassing because I'm so young. I'm like 23. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and then uh, next thing I know, I'm kind of on the floor yeah. and then I'm shaking very heavily. And the good news is, is people around me have context for this. So, you know, you're kind of in it and you're kind of, I'm not really aware of what the humans are doing, but I do remember feeling hands. And I remember simple prayers of continue to free her Lord and more Lord and filling and we speak against these things and and then if there is a spirit of death and when that person said that it felt like my insides were going to come out to the outside and it didn't but I I remember feeling like the Lord was like and and I don't know this is very vulnerable to say out loud but you just know I've never had anybody speak against an assignment of death over my life but if I look back I had eating disorders where I was actively doing things that could have led to that. I mean, there's just, I Certainly always. Certainly not leading you to more life. Yeah. No. And I had nightmares yeah. from birth. I mean, there's just a lot of darkness. And whether it was rooted fully in a spirit of death, it didn't matter. In that moment, I needed to be delivered. And so, you know, I mean, again, we couldn't have started there in Kansas City. I wouldn't have had context. I would have been too much. But I think in this empowerment journey, you're just committed to whatever layer or next next encounter of healing because we're not in we're not on the other side of heaven where we're just perfect but we're committed to a life going lord i want to minister in this way to others but i can't minister this way to others if i'm not willing to do it myself i can't go around praying for healing for people and then anytime i'm sick be like well the lord's never going to heal me i have to actually say i need healing too you know
you've been enjoying this interview about a story of the Vineyard and Song, you'll love watching the session online with friends or people from your church community. Make sure to check out the release of this session online, which is available from Vineyard USA at vineyardusa.org and Vineyard Worship from vineyardworship.com. This and every session from our national conferences this summer is available online for you to use both on your own and with your church communities. Make sure to check it out. Well, and isn't it interesting to because we're kind of riffing on this theme of home mm-hmm. and it has something to do with the, the empowering presence of the spirit. But isn't it interesting that it is about freedom and that in, in the best case or in, in the best homes, mm-hmm. uh, in the most perfect homes, that's the place you're m- the most free. Mm-hmm. Right. And, mm-hmm. it, and this would be especially true in God's house. Right. For like sure. That's part of what he wants to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yes. he wants to set people free. Because his house is the safest place. So I, I just love that your story carries those themes in it. Mm-hmm. So it starts at home. Kyle gets this word. And then it's this ongoing journey of both discovering your calling, mm-hmm. but then also the places where your soul mm-hmm. and your history and your mm-hmm. story has been really challenged by life, people, and the devil. Mm-hmm. Which that's everybody, by the way. Yes. You know, at various levels. So I love that. Mm-hmm. Like, what's the point of home? The point is like that you'd be free mm-hmm. and fully yourself, fully yourself all yeah. the way. What I love, too, is that that doesn't end at some point. You're not like, so then I experienced deliverance and I was fully home in every and I'm space. Perfect. I knew everything. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm great. Yeah, I'm great. If only, it guys. continues on like to it's- this day. God continues to do this in you to say, here's how I've made you. Here's how I've made you to be a mother. Here's how I've made you to be a worship pastor. Here's how I've made you to be a friend or a wife or a sister. He brings out more pieces of that. True. Sometimes that's the most frustrating thing, right? Because you're like, at what age do I feel like I've arrived? (laughs) Because I'm an adult adult now, y'all. I'm older. I've got kids. I've been married a minute. Got a house. Yeah. yeah, All the things. And a dog. Yeah. (laughs) A real cute one. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's not like when you put directions in your phone, it says, you've arrived. (sighs) I laugh every time. I'm like, I've never arrived. I don't even know what that means. If only. If only. It's good. So talk to me now, Annabeth, you've moved from being someone who experienced coming home or feeling like this is my home when you stepped into Kansas City and God continues to affirm the fact that the vineyard is your home when you were in Columbus, when you were in Houston, now here in Denver. Mm. But now you've been asked by the Lord to create home for other people as a local pastor. What's it like for you seeing that? I mean on the other side of the mic, you know, you're, yeah. you're watching it from stage every Sunday as people come into our church. What's that like? Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, it's pretty simple, but I think, I think about that often because I think about myself walking into a church and I already knew the Lord, much less people that walk into our church that don't, where it's like, I want them to feel like they want to return here to ultimately continue in a journey of Jesus and what it looks like to live for him. Right. But that means that I know it's not up to me, so that's where the the open handedness comes. So it's like, Lord, that thing that did that for me was this active presence of you being with us. So however I lead worship, however I facilitate ministry time, however I preach sometimes, it's got to have that. So I spend a lot of time during the week trying to figure out what songs are, are not, it's not the right or the wrong. It's what songs are in season and ripe for the ears that are going to hear them, you know? And then I just rely a lot on that the Lord wants to speak to you when you're serving his people. So I don't really have to like phonetically during the week be like, okay, what prophetic words could I give between song two and three? You know, it's like in the, it actually is in the moment because there's an overflow place of like spending time with the Lord Monday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. I spend time with him and he's talking to me anyway. So I recognize his voice. So then on Sunday when I'm on stage, I still recognize the same voice that I heard in my living room on Tuesday. You know, there's, this is very simple discipleship stuff, but If it doesn't have that, like if I get into a place where it's like, well, I'll just rely on a strategy or system of like, this song does this and then we do this. Bring in drums here. Exactly. If it gets too rote, I may actually be creating a void for people to feel at home because 
And I'm not saying good production does that. That's not what I'm saying. But for me, it has to have the spirit there and on the forefront. And I have to always be willing to detour. So I have a plan, but the plan is very loose because like I sang, what a friend we have in Jesus at the end of a service on Sunday, that was a complete detour. That was not in the plan so much so that I did it acapella because I changed the key, all the things, right? Mm -hmm. All the musical things. But I knew that there was people, there were enough people in the room in that service. And I didn't do it at both services. In that service, there was enough people that are gonna need to carry that truth, you know, all week and it was just ringing on the inside of me and I thought before I have our pastor come up and in the service and I said it on the mic I just said hey guys I'm going to sing something over you because some of you are going to need to carry this with you this week and y'all there's like two people that have emailed and said that was for me now hopefully that creates the I'm home whether they've been in our church a while or they're newer to our church it helps draw them into deeper life with Jesus you yeah. know but is, is it for you I would imagine it's not all prophetic. Some of it is also that you're not just in platform ministry on a stage. You're doing life on life with people in the room. So you've heard their stories. It's the same thing as when you come to my house, mm -hmm. I know you're gluten-free. So if I'm making dinner, I'm going to not just think about what I want to eat, which is all the gluten possible, but you actually know the person Red. who's coming. It's a hospitality piece. It's a care. It's, it's making them feel at home in that place. And what I love is that you actually are doing life on life pastoral ministry with people Very as well. true. Oh, Yes. I mean, there was a season where there's a woman in our church was, I was very close with who ended up passing of cancer. But in her journey, there was just enough of us connected to her that I knew like this one song just spoke to that scenario in our church. So we just sang it often because mm -hmm. and it wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't self-serving. I think it was the right moment and it didn't last forever, you know, and we didn't sing it until she died. We just sang it on certain Sundays based on that one scenario in the life of our church. And it it woke hope in the whole room, mm -hmm. but it really met the few that were close to her and her specifically, you know. So I can't always sing everybody's favorite song on Sunday, right? <laughs> they but email past, you and ask though. Well, they do. They yeah. do. Or they ask me to learn <laughs> songs that I don't care to learn or know at all. Anyway, so yes, it is definitely, I mean, it's not just some floofy prophetic Sunday thing. It's the, it is outside of Sundays. Even it's my quiet time. It's my, it's my own belonging in a small group. It's my own, again, it's my own willingness not to just be now, now that I'm on this other side of the mic. It's not that I have to always go back over and be in the people of God. It actually is a returning to where I started. I always have to remember I walked into the church and I'm, I'm in the same spot that my congregants are in. And just because I'm leading them doesn't mean I'm somehow above or different. It just means, hey, in this moment, I'm leading you. But a lot of times I'm there with you. It's mm -hmm. both and. It's for sure both mm -hmm. and. I love that. I mean, part of what I hear, Annabeth, is a real strong expectation that the Spirit would want to do something. So when it comes to leading, you're leaning out of an expectation that the Spirit would want to do these kinds of things every Sunday morning. And well, specifically through you. Uh, yes. And then dare we say he wants to do those things so you could do this Monday wherever right. you go. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just like a Sunday thing. I think God's really gracious and it's easier on Sunday because the risk is lower because, you know, the, you know, the people, even if you don't know them, it feels safer. People go into the walls of the church and they're willing to give a prophetic word. They go into the restaurant and they don't know the person. And it's a lot more discerning if you're going to give the word. Really, it's just getting courage to do it, you know, and so. It's all the time. It's all the time. Because the thing I hate is when it's like, oh, I only, I go to church to get that stuff. I hate that. I'm like, Jesus didn't, we didn't even have church in Jesus' time. He didn't, he just did this in his life. The disciples just did this on the streets. We, we just do this with one another. We do this with people that believe, but we also see people find life with Jesus because of these gifts. Like they were sick and you prayed for them. They were in a hard time and you provided meals and just served. You know, it's not just the power gifts. It's just functioning in your gifts in general does this, you know? So, yeah. One thing I'm really aware of as we're even talking about the sense of home is we love the whole church. And many people walk into a vineyard space and they're like, this is my home. And other people walk in and they're like, you guys are cool. I can hang out every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, right? this, is not it. this is not my home. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that even as people are hearing you tell your story, that some people are coming awake to thinking that might be my home. Maybe they're not a part of a vineyard church. They've come once or twice and they're curious or 
a church planner or a pastor at a church thinking about adopting in, like some people are going to find their home here. And those that don't should be blessed to find home wherever it is. Yes. Go find a people, go find a church, dig yes. in deep, know the people on Sundays, think about them, pray for them, be connected to mm. them, but find a home. And mm. I hope for many people listening that this is your home because mm-hmm. it's my home. I love the vineyard. Me too. But wherever it is, find home. Mm-hmm. Amen. As we celebrate our 50-year anniversary in the Vineyard, if you're interested in learning more about Vineyard history, there are plenty of resources for you. Check out our show notes for links to books, YouTube videos, and more to learn about Vineyard history and identity. And make sure to keep listening to the podcast this year for stories of Vineyard churches throughout the year.